What is up you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, the Scarander. Yeah, that was awkward. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, today I got myself a match against Sean the Red Hood, and he's actually a really, really good guy who has been following me since I started actually streaming on Twitch. And, uh, you know, I never beaten him, like, ever. Um, and he's a very, very busy guy, so, you know, when it comes around, you just you take the chance, really. Uh, I'm very glad he got access to Twitter now, so I can reach him through there. And he actually responded on my message while I was in Stockholm that if I just wanted any games, really, and just, just try out DNA. That was basically what I did there. I was trying to make DNA work. And, uh, yeah, he just responded. And, like I said, never beaten this guy, so... Um, I really, really want to battle him. I, I do want to win at least once against this guy. He's a very good battle. He's actually very, extremely smart and um, just a very relaxed guy. And I kind of like that in him. Uh, he's he's kind of different from other players that I know that he's... He don't really care about winning or losing, but he tends to win anyway because he has such a relaxed way of battling. So it's very tough to bring down because of that. Uh, his team here is very tough too, with Live Party, Kangaskhan, which actually can be whatever it wants really. Uh, Rotom, we get, you know, a lot of immunities. Uh, Simipore, uh, we got the Lily, ah, forgot the name. It it could bring trouble though with Quiver Dance. And of course, the, um, Crustle. And you know, Crustle is, it's very unappreciated. It's extremely good, it can be a lot of things. So, always fearing it when I see it. I myself am using Golurk, Malamar. Special Shed Pidgeot, uh, Camera with Jorn, the Physical Choice Bandit DNA, and uh, Aquilin. And I basically just wanted to try Aquilin and see if it can work in this kind of environment. And uh, yeah, you'll see if they just do that. So without further ado, guys, enjoy. So the start off here of you know looking at his team, I really felt that Golurk is probably my best lead. It can deal with anything on his team, not well. I mean, Simipore is still tough, but that's about it. So Crustle is coming in there and. Uh, I don't really know what I was thinking here. I probably I forgot that uh, bug resisted fighting. So I was just thinking I was going to do uh, super effective damage, and no, I am not. And uh, he got the red cards. He's forcing me out. Should definitely gone for an earthquake. Thinking about it. So my Mordor is coming in, and uh, here on out, I just really felt that all right. I might as well go for a John. A John could you know hinder him because I know this thing is hazard heaven. If anything. And uh, I really, since I don't have any defogger or anything like that, I'm actually somewhat in trouble, you know, just thinking about it. It's really frustrating to see that it's such a simple strategy, and yet I still tend to forget about the hazards. So I set up my own rocks, and I mean, that's really fine, I really need it. Uh, and he will go to sleep here, so he did decide to stay in, and he's gonna switch out now to his semi pool as I myself just go for a lot of bloom. I really had nothing good going. Um, Camrot is not doing like immensely well in this battle, but you know, I still just don't want to uh, fodder it off just yet. So, Vulgar, my Quilladin is coming in, and I was thinking, alright, this guy could probably deal with some super effective damage if anything. And of course, this thing has a nasty plot. And that is actually really terrifying. So the first introduction to Quillin is a one-hit KO from um, Semipore. So I'm sorry, Volgar. Damn it. That's that's actually that is unfortunate. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to Actros here and just forcing him out. I know I'm faster, and because it went for Nasty Plot, I know it isn't scarfed or anything like that. So I can easily outspeed and destroy it. So I actually decided to just go for a play rough raw off the bat. Uh, I can't really switch around too much uh, because of the hazards inbound. So I was thinking I might as well go for some neutral damage and just do as much damage as possible with DNA. So you go to his entire cell and um, you know, I don't know what I was thinking here. Probably trying to force me off with a U-turn or anything like that. And um, it didn't really pay it off, though it did avoid the attack. So Luckily for him, I didn't kill the Semipore, and I, you know, I got to deal with those five nifty percent that you can miss with. That is real unfortunate. Um, so I go for a player up, and uh, you know, I do fair damage here, but I also know this thing will pack the fake out, so I might as well go into Golurk. I know this thing has Crafty, but the thing is that they were still my best bet, considering what a team builder had, and my Quillen, of course, being destroyed really early on. But I do have a very good prediction here, and um, I was basically just... Uh, 
I was really gambling here that he was going to think that I was going to go for Dream Punch. So um, with that in mind, I decided to do a little over prediction and go for a Shadow Punch. And you know, had he stayed in, the return that would have been following would have killed me. Even Sucker Punch really would have, you know, do immensely damage. Plus in conjunction with me, of course, not hitting with the Shadow Punch if he stayed in with the Kangaskhan. So, like I said, I was really just taking a shot in Dark that was gonna switch out, and it paid off really well. And I destroyed the Rodan with one shot, and that is basically what my Golurk needed to do. So now I feel really satisfied of him just dying. So uh, the Dracel is coming, in, and of course, the least Storm will destroy this poor guy. Assault that was no, I have no chance of surviving that. So the crit did definitely not matter. It, that leaves Storm would just destroy the hell out of me. So I saw this as a golden opportunity to set in Seratul and just go for a superpower. Because with uh, the special defense or the special attack drop in bound, I am actually free to go for wherever I want. I can wall off whatever comes here. But I knew the live pod packed a U-turn, so I was really just hoping that I could survive a U-turn after a superpower. And yeah. It it might have been a really risky move, but then again, Seratul is incredible, and you know, show me time and time again, it's made of something else besides a squishy, inky body of an uh, octopus. So I do survive that, and uh, yeah, I just basically superpowered it Brazil here, and uh, Malamar, god damn it, what a freaking awesome poke it is, and I'm so glad I did this set. You know, I've been like trashing this Pokemon for months since it came out because it has that huge weakness to use turn. But really, who the freaking cares? It kills everything in his face here. And uh, yeah, always take one or two with him before going down. That's that's the spirit. That's the spirit of Seratul. I'm saluting you. So anyway, he only got the Kangaskhan left and the live pause. So I decided to uh, go for my um, Pidgeot here. And it's not defensive by any means, but it got one thing that uh, is kind of good, I guess, and that is hidden power fighting, which I know will be super effective against both of them, but yeah, Sucker Punch is still a thing, so I do barely live that uh, combo with Fake Out uh, Hazards and Sucker Punch, but, uh, you know, I still am not going to be faster than a Lipod, so... That is extremely unfortunate, and the pitch of this going down. God damn it. <laughs> so that was the first time using Pidgeot in Wi-Fi battles. That's kind of cool, I guess. So, yeah. A Sucker Punch will not be able to kill me here, so I'm actually pulling through her and barely win this game. And I say barely because I did only get... I think I got Hammer Off left. And I am not sure I could have done a good switching with that. So I decided to go for a Wild Charge. Finishing off in style if I do survive the Sucker Punch, which I actually did there. And yeah, this is basically GG. So, Sean, really, thank you for this battle. It's a pleasure battling you because it was such a fun way of battling. And I really believe that had I not gone for a Shadow Punch with uh, my goal right there in the middle of the game, I probably wouldn't win this one either. So, first win against you, and I'm super proud of myself, finally. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle, and like I said there, it was much closer than it really looked like, I got the momentum, and uh, sometimes that's it's basically just enough. Like I said, I took a shot in the dark with the Shadow Punch, and it paid off, and I would have been destroyed if it didn't. It, I really would have been, because I would not have had a lot of things that could counter the Rotom as a threat, really. God damn it, I mean, I barely, barely won a one, <laughs> looking back at it. Um, so yeah, without... What else should I say? Yeah, I mean, check Sean out. Uh, I'm gonna leave his Twitter channel or his uh, Twitter address down below. Where, like I said, he's a very good peddler and he's a very, very good person in general. Always love like talking to him and, you know, just setting up things. So make sure to check him out, guys. And without that, um, thank you guys for watching as always. Don't forget, the sky is the limit. And have a good day and take care. Mm -hmm. Bye.